teams have a plethora mm -hmm. and almost more than enough talent mm -hmm. these days. If you think Duke, yeah, yeah. UNC, they don't even know what players to put on the yeah. field. Yeah. Now is college lacrosse more about the strategic scheme or the athlete for top division one team? I think it depends on the player, right? It depends on the kind of player you recruit. I think we've, we've been fortunate enough to see over the past 10 years, we've seen college guys come through that can completely change a game, right? Can completely win a game by themselves. Mike Powell, for example, is a guy that it didn't really make a difference. He had great players around him, without a doubt. You know, the Sean Lindsay's, Brian Nees, all these guys that were, you know, some of the best to ever do it. But Mike Powell can win games on his own. You know, Paul Rabel's another one that came through that can win games on his own. Um, and so now, people are getting better and better. But with that being said, I still think individual talent is a big deal, right? Like if you have a guy that changes games, a Peter Baum, a Steel Sandwich, they, they, that's what they do, they change games, you know? And I, and I think, uh, so while strategically and, and strategy with coaches is without a doubt important, the Coach Petros, the Dom Starges, all those guys will continue to come up with game plans that keep them in games and even win games for them. I still think at the end of the day, you need the guy that's gonna get you to Monday and can win a game for you. Feel that. So, if you could score the goal to win the world championship or teach a lesson to a child who will ultimately go to college and you could only choose one, which one would you choose and why? Well, we won a national championship, so I think at this point in my career, it's more important to me to, to teach uh, teach kids about this sport and get them into school. Man, I, I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but it's incredible how much this sport has done for so many of us. You know, my, I'm, a, I'm a great example of a kid from Baltimore who I loved playing, but I certainly didn't have any like aspirations of I'm going to take this professionally and hopefully get signed and put, do all this different. That that wasn't the plan, but. Turns out, I got into college. I got to go to Johns Hopkins University, which is a pretty good school. I got to graduate in four years. I got to travel around the world while at Hopkins. You know, we went to Japan, come back, go to Italy. We do all these fun things, and then I get to play professionally, sign with STX and Nike, and this is what I do for a living now. So for me, at this point, it's more important for me to talk to kids and convince them that there's a, there's a chance that if you want to take this sport seriously, you might get yourself into college, you might get a great job. You, there, there's a bunch of opportunities that are going to come from it. So you mentioned you're sponsored by Nike and SCX. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that lacrosse companies should have a greater obligation in the growth of youth, youth lacrosse in underprivileged areas? Yeah, you know, man, I think in our sport, we're still growing, as you've said multiple times. Every company does a pretty good job doing things. Like, we just had our sales meeting for STX about three months ago, and, and growing the sport in underserved community, communities is really important. And there's a bunch of different initiatives that are currently going on and have been going on for years now, but we really don't publicize it. Um, and so, I honestly think, and this is not me saying because I'm with these companies, this is me saying honestly, this is how I feel, is that most manufacturers, I don't care who it is, you know, I know I'm with SDX and Nike, but Maverick, um, Warrior, Brine, everybody tries to do their part to grow the game in underserved communities, you know, and, and honestly, the other thing that I think is great about our sport is a lot of professional players do their part, you know, John Christmas does a lot. In Philadelphia, he does a lot in San Francisco. You know, Scott Hockstad, Xander Ritz, Max Ritz do a lot in Southern California uh, with growing the sport in underserved communities. So people try and do their part. It's just not as publicized.